One of the most important resources that we talk about when sending people to Mars is water. Whether it be a temporary mission or a permanent settlement on the planet, we have to make sure that we have enough water to sustain themselves. So how are we going to collect that water? How much water will we need? And what's a good way of recycling it? Let's talk about that. In order to get to the point where we can start collecting water or ice on Mars, we have to first go through these three phases. And these phases are exploration, mining, and processing. So let's begin with exploration. Exploration begins with a few basic questions. How much water do we need? Where does it exist on Mars? And for what processes or why do we need the water? Once we pass exploration, we go on to mining. Mining is actually understanding the engineering challenges or the difficulties of collecting that ice or water from Mars whether it be on the surface, on the ice caps, or underneath the surface. We have to be able to get that and collect it somehow. And lastly, processing. How are we gonna use this liquid water and in what processes do we need to? Do we need to use it for drinking, for ventilation, or do we need to make propellant with it? So let's begin with the exploration phase. NASA over the last 10 to 15 years has spent a lot of effort in trying to understand where exactly there is water on Mars. You've probably seen many headlines that say, we found water on Mars, we found it here, we found it there. And in the video, Turning the Red Planet Blue, we discuss further on where exactly this water exists. So basic recap covers that there's a lot of ice underneath the surface, and this exists at mid to high latitudes, both north and south of the equator. We also see a lot of water in the North Pole. However, due to the unstable climate near the poles, we have to be able to stay closer to the equator. So we have this fine balance of wanting to be close to the equator. However, that's where less water actually exists. But let's assume that we can find a location that either has hydrated minerals or ice underneath the surface. How are we going to mine that? But first, let's talk about hydrated minerals. Hydrated minerals are molecules that have a lot of water in the molecule itself, meaning that if we were able to break apart that molecule, we'd be able to get a lot of water from it, or at least water vapor that we could then cool down. However, there's an issue with this. Hydrated minerals requires us to turn into vapor form or raise it to very high temperatures, and this requires a lot of energy. And although it might actually be easier to mine these minerals from the surface, it takes so much more energy to raise it to that temperature that I'm gonna put hydrated minerals to the side for now and primarily talk about obtaining ice. So by talking about ice, we have to think about where it is below the surface. Now the US Army actually put a lot of research in developing something called a rod rigas well, or a rod well for short. Now a rod well works by first mining through the typical soil or rock. Then it gets to the overburden layer of a glacier or ice. This is the layer where it's contaminated a lot by the surrounding soil so that you wouldn't necessarily want that type of water. However, once you get through that layer and you get to the raw pure ice, you can go deep enough and then you can start to melt it. And by melting that water and going far enough down, you actually have a structure that's stable enough that it won't collapse on itself. Therefore, you're basically making an underground warm pool that then melts and forms water. And once you have water, all you have to do is pump it back up to the surface and that's it. So how exactly are we going to drill through Mars? Well, to start out, we're gonna use a mechanical drill. Similar to how we drill through rock here on Earth, we'd wanna be going through this hard rock-like solid. However, that becomes an issue when we start to go through ice, primarily because some of this could turn into water and could cause the drill to malfunction or to break. And this would be an issue because we wouldn't want our drill to stop us from obtaining water. So once we got to the overburden layer or the ice layers, we would want to transition from the mechanical drill to either an electrothermal drill or a hot water drill. And both of these focus primarily on using heat to try and get through the ice. So how will we power this rod well? We could power it with basic electrical energy, whether it be solar panels or wind power. However, there's another idea that if we use a radio isotope thermoelectric generator, that produces about 20 times more heat than actual electrical power. Therefore, we can transfer that heat to then melt the ice directly. Now to put it in perspective, it would take about 140 kilowatt hours to create a thousand kilograms of water on Mars using one of these wells. Now that we're able to actually mine the ice and turn it into water, we have to talk about processing. So the processing will mostly include storing the water, purifying it to make it safe to drink or use for EVA ventilation. However, a lot of it, as mentioned in the last video, will probably go into propellant production and actually using it to create methane and liquid oxygen. Now we get into the question of how much do we think we'll need? For NASA's exploration zones, they said they wanted about 
100,000 kilograms of water available for astronauts. And this primarily is for a propellant issue. Most of the water that would be used for an entire mission will go to developing the propellant to get them back off of Mars. Therefore, a lot of the water that we need to survive is actually just going to be recycled. For example, on the International Space Station, 70 to 90% of the water that they use is recycled. And recycling water on Mars is actually more energy efficient than collecting ice from underneath the ground. Therefore, if we're able to raise that percentage and recycle even higher and higher amounts of water, then we get to a point where all of the ice that we'd be mining would directly be going to propellant production. From my perspective, one of the biggest things we need to do right now is honing in on where the water is on Mars. Yes, we have studies that show the approximate areas and how deep it may be, but if we're able to enhance that data, send new orbiters or new landers to guarantee that information, then that would basically show us where we need to land and where we can drill for ice. Once we get to that point, we could design mechanical electrothermals or hot water drills to actually get to ice and pump it back out. In the next episode, we're going to continue on in situ resource utilization. In the past, we have talked about oxygen, but in this case, we're going to go even further in looking at how colonists or short term missions are going to create oxygen on the surface. And we're also going to compare it to the International Space Station and see how they recycle their oxygen. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode.